Okay, so I've been thinking about the cheapest and simplest ways to take 400-ish dollars to get yourself a little backup power system for off-grid use in the event of some sort of natural disaster or also to take out camping. So these I have deduced to all be around the same price point and therefore are something someone with a limited budget might be considering. I'm just going to describe what I see as the pros and cons and let you decide what might work best for you. All right, so on the left, of course, we have a $100 Harbor Freight solar panel with a $250 power station. This one's by Jackery. There's a lot of options now that do the same thing in the similar price point. This is probably one of the easiest ways you're going to have 12 volt power with a solar recharge capability and also an inverter for AC use. Now, of course, the big limitation on these is their battery capacity as well as their inverter capacity. So this inverter is limited to 200 watt output. So you're really not going to be able to run a whole lot of things. Laptops work no problem. Lower draw items like that. Now of course there's much more expensive and larger higher capacity versions of power stations. So of course you could spend thousands upon thousands of dollars on a much larger system. This one's $250. Obviously that's going to limit both the internal battery capacity as well as what amount of wattage the inverter can handle. However, it's literally one cable to connect from the panel to the power station and you're set to go. So that one's gonna come in low at about 350. Of course, you could buy a bigger power station and ratchet that up to four, 450, or like I said, thousands of dollars, <laughs> depending on how large you want it to go. But in that case, you'd probably need a much larger solar array as well. Moving on here, we have another 100 watt solar panel array and this is by Renogy. It actually has a charge controller attached to the back of the panel, whereas a power station would have it built into the actual unit. Here we have a standard Marine RV deep cycle battery. Obviously you can get these for a range of prices as low as, you know, $75 at Walmart. This Duracell is a little more. It was probably about 90, I think, after a discount at Batteries Plus. And then here we have a 1200 watt pure sine wave inverter. This one is well respected, but costs $200. That array right there would cost you about $500. So now of course that's, you know, no discounts, no use, no warehouse deals. So keep that in mind. So we're jumping from 350 to about 200 plus 200 plus 80, we'll say, even if you say 75, so you're still at 475 minimum for that type of setup. Now, of course you can get cheaper, less capable inverters as well. So this inverter is much higher power than the inverter in this little jacker unit. To get a 1200 watt inverter in a built-in power station, you're looking above a thousand dollars for sure, right? Right now, and that'll go down over time. All right, so the biggest downside to this guy is that you're gonna have to wire all this stuff up. You gotta wire up the inverter. This panel already is connected to the charge controller. So connect the charge controller to the battery and the battery to the inverter. That's one downside. Another downside is that weight of a sealed lead acid battery, which is what we're talking about in this price range because obviously a lithium battery is still going to cost you quite a bit more. You have weight and needing to rig up the connections, which isn't a problem. It's going to be permanently mounted. Last but not least, we have a gas generator. Now, of course, you can buy gas generators of all shapes, sizes, and capacities as well. So this one, uh, it's when it's a 1200 watt inverter, exact same wattage rating as this inverter here. But of course, you're going to have to fill it with gas. A lot of the lower price generators right now are seem to be uh, around 2000 watts rating uh, and hovering more around the 400 to 450 range. So the new version of this this one, uh, about 1600 watts and comes in around 420, I believe. So, so you see they're all kind of in the same ballpark price-wise. The gas generator, we all know, the downside is you have to have fuel. Will you have enough fuel on hand? The one gallon right here is probably gonna last about 10 hours on this generator. You're gonna need to either have a lot of fuel on hand or you're gonna have to be very conservative with your actual use of the generator. The obvious trade-off with any type of solar powered system is that you're going to need sun. You can only charge it during the day and hopefully if you have good light. If you're somewhere like where I am and you have a lot of tree coverage, that might be a pain for part of the day. These are things to consider. We all know that with the generator, essentially, as long as you have fuel, you can run it in just about any conditions, right? With enough battery capacity, you can do the same with a solar powered system. These batteries are limited. You can pay much more money for much higher capacity batteries. However, you're not going to stay in that $400 range anymore. You're, you're jumping really fast. On my trailer, I have a nice 100 amp hour lithium battery that uh, is actually relatively a bargain at $500 right now. This one battery 
costs more than any of these items out here. So of course you can get much, much larger batteries and you can buy more batteries and tie them together and all these things. When it comes to camping, obviously the big side, downside with the generator is that a lot of campgrounds have generator hours, so you can't run them all day. So like a solar panel not working at night, generator is also not working at night in those type of settings. So if you have enough battery capacity, this type of setup could work all night for you. If you had a light enough load or a large enough power station, same thing. So with that in mind, generators definitely have their trade-offs, not to mention the noise, which is obviously why you can't run them all night at a campground. These guys are silent. A lot of trade-offs, a lot to think about. Hopefully that helps you kind of weigh some of the costs and benefits. And to be honest with you, I still carry my generator with my trailer when I'm out camping. So, <laughs> but if you understand the limitations and the benefits of each of these, you know, maybe you end up with a little bit of each. So I'd summarize it like this. If you're gonna do a little tank camping and you just don't wanna run down your uh, car's battery, uh, I would go with something like this Jackery unit, but a larger vehicle. And I was gonna permanently mount a secondary 12 volt system. I would definitely go with this style of unit, especially if you have a trailer and you can throw the panel out in the sun when the trailer's under the trees. Uh, otherwise you just mount, you know, a hundred watt panel on the roof. You actually save a lot of money if you just got a basic hundred watt panel. It'd be like 85 bucks or hundred bucks. Uh, to go with your $80 battery and your $200 inverter. If you don't have any concern for noise, then maybe a gas generator is for you. you just run that thing all the time. You're just gonna have to bring enough fuel. But you'd always know you'd have enough power when you turn it on. Whereas these guys are gonna be dependent on how much you recharge it during the past day. People with generators don't care about cloudy days. So if you had between $350 or $450, let me know what one you would pick and why, how you use your auxiliary power system. All right, I hope that helps.